how did this whole thing started, uh, Chantel? Well, in December 2016, um, I sent my daughter to school for her education and she did not, um, she would go to school by car and then catch the bus home to my aunt house who was caring for her while at will work. Um, and I got a call that she did not get off of the school bus on mm, December the 5th and they asked was she with me and I told them no she wasn't with me. So I took a trip down to the school to see if my daughter maybe had stayed after school. Um, I found out that she didn't stay after school. They did an all call. She didn't show. So I went back to my aunt's house where she was supposed to get off of the bus and automatically called the police and put in a missing person report. So so your daughter, you, you, let me just recap on that. I know that was pretty quick. So is that a regular routine for her? She go to school every day, get on the bus, go to school. That's a regular thing every day? Yeah, every day I drop her off to school. She right. goes into school and then she gets home every day. Well, she was getting home every day no later than 2.15, 2.30 um, to be exact. And this was a regular routine every day since she's, well, since we've been in North Carolina and then even before when she was going back to school in Maryland. Right. The, the, the days leading up, did you notice anything strange with your daughter? Did she say anything to you? Did she make any 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 conversation about people might be following her or any anything at all yeah i did notice something strange because i actually was working out of town during the time and so i had recently came back to charlotte i quit the job that i was working to come back into charlotte because i noticed that her attendance were was not adding up and i noticed that um her grades had plummeted uh very bad when i would have a talk with her um, when I was away at work, she would just really not say anything um, was going on. It. So she wasn't verbal about why her grades were dropping. So at that point, I made a decision to come back to Charlotte and schedule a appointment with the teachers to see if we can talk about if she needed any extra help um, and to justify where was she in her the attendance always said tardy or absent, so I wasn't sure if she was tardy or absent, and I wasn't sure if that was playing a part of her grades being starting to come down as well. Right. You said that she wasn't very vocal. Is that a part of her personality? Is she that person that doesn't really talk much? Uh, what kind of relationship no, have you she, had with her? No, she actually talk, used, used to talk a whole lot. She was very talkative before this December. Um, incident. She was always playful, um, actually was diagnosed with attention deficit hyper disorder. So she was said to be actually hyper, but she went from being this hyper bubbly little girl that always hug and make jokes and to kind of quiet and reserved once she had entered into high school. Right, right, right. And, and and you didn't notice any like any weird activity or did you pay attention to any activity like what she might be on social media checking out or conversation do you look at those things did you look at those things at that time yeah i did look at them um i did look at social media and then right i did notice that she was on social media so she was not allowed to be on uh electronic device without supervision um and so she knew that but going to school apparently she was still able to access social media and i guess anything else online um so i did find that out and i did actually wanted to have a meeting with the school in reference to this because i was so adamant about her not being on technology that i wanted her to not have ebooks i wanted her to have paper with a pencil for several reasons, and my main reason was because I had safety concerns what about your, what, just what social your, media. Period. So, so you you were just concerned of us of the social media activity. Did she do anything in the past that made you concerned about it now? Did she do anything in the past like, with social, social media? Social media, yeah. I mean, you concerned about it? 
Yeah, and at, uh, when she was in middle school, she had got a cell phone for her birthday. Um, when she went to the eighth grade, I bought her a cell phone for her birthday. And I noticed that her cell phone was interfering with her school activities, so I removed the cell phone from her. Um, and then on social media, there was people that she was hanging out with um, on social media that I did not know or approve of. Um, and when I say that, meaning some of the languages they were talking about, um, I'm not okay with her having her pictures, whether it's a face shot or anything. So it wasn't that I was seeing anything inappropriate. It was just that I felt like she was too young to be on social media without any supervision with everything that was going on in the world and in the news. So I didn't allow it at home. So I asked the school not to allow it in school. Right, right, right. I, I mean, you are just like concerned like every other parent. Because my son, yes. he goes, he, he's on the phone and I'm, I'm constantly asking like, like, you know, it's too much of it. So you just, just as any yes. other parents, parent do, doing the thing. So that day now that she, 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 you couldn't get in touch with her. What was your concern? What was going through your mind? Whew. Um... Well, I, I can't really say what was going through my mind. My mind was probably kind of froze because, again, we're not from North Carolina, so I don't allow my children to really hang out in strangers' house. I'm more so the type if they want to have company, we can have company at our house. Right. And so I did not even know where to start, where to look, who to call, um, I had removed her and stripped her from her cell phone back in eighth grade. So when she went to high school, she still didn't have a cell phone. So I didn't have a cell phone number to call, to track, to trace. Um, and again, that was because I felt like that she shouldn't have a phone. Right. And even then I was beating myself up saying, you know, I should have just gave her a phone. Um, so it was mixed emotions going through my head. Um, a lot of guilt, really. Um, not shame just more so guilt and fear fear that the words that i wouldn't see her again so what really happened now she was missing for a first day uh, evening time you didn't get her um so tell us about what yeah. happened after that okay i made a little timeline yeah um so on december the 5th the incident happened at the school on right. december the 6th I went back to the school. I tried to talk to administrative, ask the administrative if they could help me. Um, told them that this was not like my daughter and that I didn't have any help and I didn't have a clue where to start searching. Right. Um, I have on December the 6th, I also asked to see the footage um, because the school did have some cameras on campus. So I asked, could I see the footage um, possibly to see, you know, what happened or when was the last time they could see my daughter on the campus period. And so I was told no, I couldn't see the footage. So on December the 7th, um, it was uh, the homicide detectives reached out to me. They decided that they would just go and um, talk about a possible homicide. Uh, we did not get approved for an Amber Alert. An uh, Amber Alert is when they put the signs on the highway yeah. and they look for the children. And so I had to fill out an application to uh -huh. even have it approved. And so I was told that that application was denied um, without any explanation. Hold on. It was just simple. So, so your child is missing going on two days, two, two, going on two, three days. And you were denied an Amber Alert? Why, why, why would they deny anyone an Amber Alert to look for their child? Did they think that you was lying about it? Well, no, they knew I wasn't lying because actually there was footage of my daughter. It was just that I was not allowed to see it. So they knew that I was not lying about her going missing. Um, and then when I asked as well, why don't my daughter get an Amber Alert? Because she was missing and she went missing from the school with footage um, and possibly a description and the uh, detectives just basically told me that some people are not approved and in our case she was not approved and that rally North Carolina was responsible for that approval process and they had denied my daughters. Well, I'm still I'm still baffled by not being approved. A child is missing and they're not gonna approve 
Amber Alert. Guys who are watching, who's not watching from the U.S., um, Amber Alert is, is sent out if there is a missing child. Amber Alert was named after this child, Amber, who went missing years ago and then she wind up dead. So after the, the, the U.S. adapted this Amber Alert, so if there's a missing child or a missing report, it goes out in everybody's cell phone on the highways, all over. It even shows up on some TVs that this person is missing. They give the description and, and all of that stuff. So this is this is widely available and should be widely accessible by any parent who is missing a loved one. So the guest is saying that she was denied an Amber Alert. Kind of something to kind of raise your eyebrow a little bit, right? So why? Um, so going on two days now, you're in super panic mode and you're not going to get an Amber Alert sent out. What, what happened after? Um, I began to have people reach out to me once I, um, I asked my mother, could she go on Facebook live and do a video for me because I didn't have the strength to do it and right. she did it. And so I had begun to have people reach out to me and it was a particular organization in Charlotte, North Carolina called Million Youth March of Charlotte. Right. And so what they do is they reach out to parents that lost their children. In most cases, the children um, are deceased. And so once they started reaching out to me, they helped blast my daughter picture around. Um, and then I had like uh, someone who reached out to me that brought flyers and said that she would do flyers. So it more so turned into the community reaching out, lending support um, a few people. And we kind of walked the streets every night, gave out flyers, put them everywhere, and formed our own search team. So they did the job that the city supposed to or you or the u.s the government or whoever supposed to provide for everyone yes. they, they basically do their own they did their own little private amber alert to, to let people know what happening around there so four yes. days three four days going into it did you for once think that boy uh, i'm thinking the worst did you did you get to that point that you thought that she was possibly deceased um i wouldn't say that i got to that point i tried to prepare myself for that um that she i would never see her again but i just fought with my thoughts and i wrote it down that she would come home um but i was however a mother prepared for her child's uh death i was preparing for it um in fact a candlelight vigil was set um, for her and so I was actually getting ready to go out to for to do the candlelight visual and pretty much um, Just search for her for the rest of my life um, because I wasn't going to stop searching for her whether she was dead or alive So about the fourth day uh -huh. right before we was to go for the candlelight visual is when I got a phone call um, from the police saying that they had kicked someone door in but before they had kicked the door in to find my daughter, um, I was getting all kinds of emails on Facebook and right. pictures from strange people saying it was a nightmare. Um, people I never had knew. Um, so I kind of just did not want to even go outside because now um, I reached out to the news. The news would not interview me, but our story was on the news. Um, but they would not interview me even really until this day I've never had an interview about that incident um, so it was pretty much smothered up covered up and shut up and even now I'm still fighting to the day um, because although I have an attorney on the case the attorney don't even talk to me really so I've spoken to the attorney two times um, and so it's it's been a nightmare but uh, just keep going so day four you got a call from the police they kicked down somebody's door mm -hmm. and they believe that person that they found is your daughter what mm -hmm. did you discover yeah so um i got a call come to the er right away um that they had found my daughter that they believed that was my daughter and so when they i went to the er and i spoke to the detectives they just um pretty much told me um, that they had to take her to feed her on the way to the hospital because during the time she hadn't ate any food um, she had to be pretty much in contained in one area of a room um, and she would use the bathroom and things like that inside of a cup so she was real hungry um, so we had to kind of teach her how to eat again 
um, we had to teach her pretty much how to be human again as far as safety and things like that. She was assaulted, um, sexually assaulted and physically assaulted and uh, the person was prosecuted um, right, and we, we found out the that he... Of the person. Why, why, why do you mean that she was assaulted? They took her in and what what, what happened? What, 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 what happened? What did they do to her? Um, so he took her in. So he took her into his place and he pretty much he raped her. Um, he had her do um, sexual things to him as well. And she could barely walk when I got her back. So it was, um, he done a lot of ungodly things to her. Oh my God. Did she know, did she know that person? No, she didn't know him. But when I spoke to my son, like after we had recovered her back and got her back, when I spoke to my son and my son seen a picture of him on the, um, like when he get arrested, yeah. so you could see public records. And so my son said that he did recognize his face because at the time my son was in the 11th grade uh -huh. and my daughter was in the ninth grade. And so when I showed my son the picture, he said that he do remember seeing that guy before on a train when they were taking the train to their grandmother house, um, which wasn't far from where we lived. It was uh -huh. much prior. And so I asked my son, you know, did he say anything to you all? Um, but it had appeared that he had been following them for a while. Oh, so this bastard has been trailing your daughter for a period of time probably watching yeah. when she go in or how watching her what time she leaves yeah. have a full track of, of of her activities so it was well yeah. a well orchestrated plan yes of sorts yes and he actually went into the school where uh. she was um and he i asked her what happened when he came into the school so she said that she was in the library and she said a group of kids had said that they were going to go to the mall and they were going to cut out of school early. She said um, that he was told or said to be the person that was going to take them to the mall when it was time for everybody to go. Only she, for some reason, went. And then I found out later when she was in a hospital that it was money transacted for um, one of the students and that actually had went to eighth grade with her. So somebody that was in the 8th grade with her um, I thought they were not hanging out anymore they wouldn't go to the same high school long story short this kid um, and her I had asked for them not to have any connections when they were in the 8th grade because it was some things that he had called me I never met this kid right. but he caught, caught me on the phone before and I was friendly with all of the children and he called me and he was you know telling me about my daughter and he wanted to hang out with her and you know he trying to get her to do right in her grades so he seemed to be a pretty good kid and so he had this kid had talked to me for a while um for at least a half of the school year yeah and so when it had came up that he had gave her a cell phone like i told him not to uh -huh. um i went to the counselor at the school and told the counselor the kid name and said, you know, I asked him not to do the cell phone. You know, he had some incidents that had happened to him. Right. But long story short, everything that he told me happened to him in the eighth grade is what actually happened to my daughter. So I think my daughter was like a movie strip and she didn't know because she, at this point, she was very friendly, trust anybody, just always a friendly little kid. Like right. everywhere she goes, she want to hug, she want to talk, she want to hang out, she want to dance and sing. So um, one of the, I won't say who she was because I want to protect her job, but she was actually the one that came to me and told me that she was certain that someone came into the school. It was not their student and he did take my daughter. So she told me that and that's really the only way. How, that how, I knew how, did, that how did he, someone want to know? What, did, she, what, what, did she stray away? Did she walk out freely with him? Did he did he hold a gun to her, to her head? How did he get her to leave? A 14-year-old child, how did he get her to leave and walk and go wherever with him? What did he do? 
that he went and again it was a group of them they were all supposed to go to the mall and from what she tells me that he was supposed to replace the cell phone that she was punished with and so he was going to buy them a cell phone they were going to hang out and i guess he would have a way to communicate so when they left out of the school she said that her friends were supposed to come they did not come and then she said that he said they had to go to his house to get his wallet and she said when they went to the house to get the wallet because he said he don't have money but you know he didn't have his money on him she said he was like come in for a minute when he came in for it when she came in for a minute to, and he's getting a wallet at that point he pushes her in the bedroom keep her in the bedroom and everything else is no more you don't see her no more oh lord have mercy